Coron Island is one of the most famous destinations for freedivers and scuba divers alike. But even in paradise, nasty events can still happen. Nico Soriano, founder of the freediving school Seasoned, reminded us of this reality a few months back, and I quote, As we were floating on the surface, waiting for marine life to appear, we saw Malexi, a commonly seen manta in the area, unconsciously lying still on a coral bed. His spectral fin was missing, clear sign that it was cut by a very sharp object. His entire back was almost cut in half. It's like seeing your friend lying on the floor, dead. As an ocean lover myself, I decided to get in touch with Nico and try to understand if these were common events. Local fishermen have been fishing in these waters for centuries. We can't blame them for what's happening with marine life all around the world. But the health of our seas is not at risk, and I wish that protecting these majestic creatures would benefit them more than fishing them. With more tourism, these endangered species are worth more alive than dead. And with sustainable development, more visitors can also mean better protection. With a few friends, we linked up with Bacao Bay Resort and Sea Zone Freediving School to explore the beauty of this place. Welcome to Cora. Currently staying in Bacco Bay Resort during our time in Koran and we're about to be picked up by the guys from Sea Zone for a two days tour dedicated to free diving and finding the best spots uh, around the island of Koran. The weather forecast is actually good but the visibility underwater wasn't too great the last few days they told us. So crossing fingers that this time around when we're gonna go down we're gonna have a good visibility. Let's try that. Some friends joined me on this trip. Freedivers Julia Kisombeng and Olympia New Love, WWF ambassador Mark Nelson and content creator Chris Johnson. Welcome to our first dive site. This is a skeleton wreck. Profile of the ship, uh, the bow is uh, about 3 to 4 meters from the surface. Going to the stern, it's all the way up to 17 to 18 meters. So it's just the hull of the ship, that's remaining, so that's why it's called skeleton deck. It's too dark. Show me those abs, come on, you've been working on it all summer. Action. Diving inside shipwrecks is one of my favorite underwater experiences. You can find almost a dozen of sunken ships in Koran, all related to the Second World War, when in 1944, US bombers attacked the Japanese fleet and called in the bay. But more people visiting also means more boats. And you can see that some of them don't really understand the impact they can have. Like throwing anchors at the reef instead of using permanent ones. They are destroying what people come to see in the first place. There is still a lot of work to be done in educating locals and tourists on how to protect Koran. And this is one of the missions Season is trying to achieve. Season started in Manila. It was founded by me and Jen Abanilla, and right now we expanded here in Coron. So, why Coron? Because I think Coron is truly a fee diver's paradise. And we, we want to make an impact here as Sea Zone. We want to promote sustainable tourism, not only for the locals, but the whole world to see that, like, how we do the tours, like, how we handle our guests safety and uh, we want to show the beauty of Koran. 
in Quran, you can penetrate inside the Japanese shipwrecks. Uh, you can dive inside lakes. You can see mammals like uh, dugong, manta rays. And the coral reef here, it's really nice and it's very alive. So where are we going now, Nico? So right now we're going to East Tanga Shipwreck. Uh, it's around 10 minutes from Skeleton Wreck to East Tanga Shipwreck. It's a Japanese uh, shipwreck. So it got sunk in uh, 1944. Uh, it's from the Japanese Imperial Army. The shallowest part is around 4 meters and the deepest part is around 20 meters. Once we arrive on site, we notice the current brought a lot of natural waste. Leaves, seagrass, the visibility wasn't great, but got better the deeper we went. Unfortunately, we are not only surrounded by seagrass. It's the same everywhere around the world now. Plastic is already an issue in Korea. People are being more and more educated about it though. But this problem also needs to be taken care of by bigger businesses. We actually partnered with Bacao Bay Resort because of the actions they were implementing to protect the bay. I'm about to meet with the manager Gilbert who will explain to us what kind of practice do they implement in terms of sustainable tourism in the development of this resort. The major challenge here at Koron is the anticipation of the arrivals of tourists. Uh, Koron is a new destination and people worldwide are getting uh, to be aware of what Koron has to offer, which is the untapped, undeveloped nature. To preserve the nature, water, the bay, the thing is the proper waste program. Number one would be the sewer system. If there's no proper disposal, then all the waste goes to the water. It's being addressed at the moment, and we believe it has to be a collective effort from all stakeholders, from the resorts, to the boat industry, tour operators, and of course the local government. In a way also, it would be nice that they can control that it doesn't become an over-tourist destination. We just arrived for our lunch and the resort organized something for us which is really nice. We were a bit, we were a bit spoiled, I must admit. I did not ex uh, expect something that comfortable. Very good surprise. As we were developing the resort, we took notice already of that thing to preserve the environment and be sustainable. We have a sewer treatment plant. Whatever we use as the treated water, we use it for irrigation to water our garden. 
Now, right within the vicinity, would we have mangroves. And mangroves are known for biodiversity. We have tried to initiate a mangrove planting program. And we'd like to extend this with our guests. We would like them to have that good experience of planting a mangrove for themselves. Mangroves are helping not just the, the sea life, but it can also protect land in terms of typhoon. And then uh, we espouse uh, the no plastic single use. In terms of our food use, we source only locally available produce. After a great lunch, we continued our journey to one of the preferred spots for freedivers and scuba divers alike, Luluyan Lake, most commonly known as... Guys, welcome to Barakuda Lake. Here in this uh, dive spot, we're going to use a uh, lesser weight because uh, the water inside, that's 70% uh, fresh water and 30% uh, uh, seawater. So we're less buoyant when we're inside the Barakuda Lake. What makes Barracuda Lake so special beside the majestic limestones is the presence of a thermocline. The lake is composed of different layers of water, fresh water on top around 27 degrees and salty water 10 to 15 meters below with temperature rising up to 40 degrees. The clear water, moon-like environment and a weaker buoyancy caused by the fresh water makes this lake a dream playground for freedivers. In Barracuda Lake you can really experience the essence of freediving, being present in the moment focusing on what is happening inside you, aware of what is around you. A lot of similarities can be drawn between freediving and meditation, mostly because of their abilities to bring you back in the moment. We left this morning Bacao Bay and the island of Coron with the guy from Sea Zone. We are having an hour and a half drive to reach uh, the northern west part of Botswana. Hopefully, we're going to see some dugong. According to Nico and MJ, we have about 70% chance to see them. Let's see if we get lucky today. Right now we're in Makalachau. It's our takeoff point going to Aban, where the dugong is. According to legends, dugongs were thought to be mermaids. Today their population is not endangered anymore. They are still recovering from the destruction of their natural habitat though, and need to be protected for their population to rise again. After getting our permit, our guide joined us to explain the do's and don'ts if we happen to see a do's Only one group at a time can enjoy their company, which is a very nice rule to see implemented. While waiting for our turn to come, we head out on a nearby beach to set up for lunch, greeted by local children. Little did we know that we would need all this extra energy to keep up with what was about to happen. The 
Dugong is a very gentle animal, up to 3 meters tall, weighing up to 400 kilos. But don't let this big sea cow fool you. They are fat, they go deep and can stay a long time underwater. Swimming after this animal and free diving to get closer will take a lot of your energy, especially with the rough sea like we had on that day. As a precautionary measure, we always took the time to check out on each other, making sure everybody was safe and okay. But once you get there, what a magical moment. Saying goodbye to the dugong, saying goodbye to Karan, it is easy to understand why more and more people are craving to experience what this island has to offer. Let's hope that we will be clever enough to protect this magical place and let the generations to come enjoy it as much as we did. <laughs>